Welcome to Intuitive Art Sales. This is the show where I, Jessica Craddock, am going to teach you how to source your art marketing from within. You're going to practice claiming that authentic art business that you want and leading it the most natural way for you to get there. You're going to learn to get connected to your intuition, your confidence, and your community so that you can sell your art consistently while holding strong boundaries on your work-life balance. Hello, I'm here with Daisy Ann Dixon. She is a nurse and artist who is focused on healing as well as salvage materials in her work. Cool, cool. She's averaging about $2,700 a month right now and she's aiming for six figures. So yay. Hello, Daisy. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, <laughs> Daisy said, I think I might be interested in doing that. And I said, well, I know the person who's in charge, so you should submit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daisy has also been a client of mine for the past four months. Yeah, right around four or five months. Yeah, four or five months. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. So, Daisy, this is the fun question, and we're going to start with it. Imagine it's a year from now. And you and I are sitting here together on Zoom and we are celebrating because you just broke the six figures mark. $100,000 in 12 months or more. Let's yeah. make it bigger. $120,000 in 12 months. Why not? I'm here for it. Tell me about that. How does it feel? What are you doing? What's it look like? Can you paint me a little picture? Um, Feels really good. It feels like I... I'm seeing the fruits of my labor. Um, I've put a lot of time and energy into it. I am um, making great connections through different industries, um, hospitality, healthcare we've talked about, mm -hmm. represented at different galleries throughout the United States, moving internationally, <laughs> increasing sales internationally as well. Um, taking on large scale commissions as my main passion project, I guess, and also working in murals, abstract murals. Oh, I know that you have done a couple of murals recently, but I wasn't aware that it was a thing you were looking for more of. So that's exciting. Yes. When we've been talking, it's been all uh, mostly large scale commissions yes. recently. So yep. I also didn't know about the international gallery. Yes, I, I would. Um, I feel like international has a, some good poten potential. And with the large scale abstracts in particular, I'm looking at ways where I can, and I think we talked about this just today, maybe about ways to be able to more readily and easily ship large scale abstracts, not just across the United States, but internationally too, mm -hmm. if needed, because I really want to focus some efforts there. I think there's and tell me why? I know some of these answers, but I've got to ask them anyway, because not everyone does. Why do you, why is your vision focused on these big things? Murals, large-scale commissions, hospitals, why big? I think my work carries over very well, the larger it is in very large-scale format. I think the emotion that I'm after the expression and movement that I'm able to achieve with the texture in my work, it, it carries better for me, the larger it gets, the larger it gets, it just looks better and better. So <laughs> that's a very that's selfish amazing. reason. <laughs> okay. And so I, no, that's okay though. Selfish reasons are, I mean, we're doing this because this is what we want to do. Right. right? So what's, What's wrong with saying, I want to make it big because I think it looks good. <laughs> it looks really good. Um, and I'm going to push you a little bit. Yes. How does it, how does it feel to make big work? Besides you like the way it looks, but what about the feelings? It, it feels cathartic. It feels like I can just lay everything out there. And, um, I think the impact of the emotions that I'm trying to convey, which, we kind of touched on in, in my introduction, but healing and renewal and restoration, those are all themes that 
are such a huge part of not just my life, but I think all of us can connect through that in some form or fashion. And it's a big deal. It's a big thing in our lives to go through something that needs healing, that needs restoration. And I feel like that large scale is the physicality of that coming to life, if that makes mm. sense. It, is, it does. I hadn't actually thought about it that way, but the larger it is, the more impactful that underlying message is yeah. almost. It's staring you right in the face. You can't escape it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> love and it. the universe will keep teaching you the same things. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And also along the same lines of the healing is you said hospitals one because yes. you're a nurse but it's also a I mean it's a perfect compliment it tell is. me how did you decide that or did it just kind of fall in your lap it's it's kind of something I'm actively pursuing now I first noticed when uh, I work at a very large hospital here in the Atlanta area and one of the first things I noticed when I walked through the hospital as a new employee was how much large scale art and original art they have all over the hospital, in the lobbies, down the corridors, in, in uh, surgery areas, in the rooms. And it's a very, I think it's a very impactful way to show how art affects a mood mm -hmm. and affects um, how people feel and setting. And I think hospitals are definitely smart enough to know that. Um, that creating that environment of healing and calm and security is very important for people coming there for what, whether they need to be there or they choose to be there, whatever the reason is. It's a really important aspect of healthcare. So that's just something I noticed as a, as working there. Then as, as an artist, I'm thinking this is a really great opportunity that I, I feel like I should look into not just because, because of the obviously the opportunities to get my work out and see it more, but also because it is so in line with mm -hmm. healing as like a, a theme of mine. And I just want to point out for you, if you're listening and have trouble believing that artwork has value past the it's pretty on the wall that even hospitals believe in oh, yeah. the power of art and spending probably quite a bit of money on yes. that. And you know that they're like counting all their dollars. So it's yeah. gotta be something that is truly impactful yeah. or that they believe it. So just take that as a little proof for yourself, put in your pocket. Okay, so you want to feel like you are having an impact on the world by helping people heal through art. You also want to make large scale art because it looks good and it almost helps you heal almost is what oh, I'm yeah. hearing. So For it's sure. almost a double duty. Absolutely. Um, did I get that all correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you want to be in hospitality, hospitals, international galleries. We talked about hospitals a little bit, but I want to know a little bit more about the international galleries. You said it's it's a good opportunity. Why is that a good opportunity for you? I, I think because art is one of those rare forms that can cross language barriers. Um, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, what language you speak, what background you come from, what life experiences you have, whether we have things in common or we don't, art reaches across that. And I think that's really cool. And I think any opportunity I can connect with someone and cross that gap is just really cool. So, And you keep saying the word connection. It's yes. not just healing, but connection, whether it's with one person that you are hoping to work with or sell to or have yeah. their art in your house. So it kind of is a all-encompassing thing for you as well. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. So tell me, what do you already have in place? What tools, what strengths, what mindsets do you have that could help you go out and get all of this? 
What do you already have? Um, I think I am developing connections that can help me, if not already. I was part of the other art fair recently, which is an international fair. So I feel like that was a really great opportunity to kind of get into that international exposure and market. Um, I am also starting to sell work on artfinder.com, which is an international platform similar to Saatchi, which I'm also on, which is in, they're kind of together with the other art fair. So I think those are great ways to kind of approach an international market before or in lieu of finding actual gallery representation in an international market. It's a way I can kind of get my my foot in without having to depend on gallery representation. Um, I think having my website and a newsletter are really great tools for me. I feel like the website is a really good way of having kind of what I am, what I'm about, what my art represents out there for people to easily look through at their own pace, at their own convenience. Um, so I think in addition to, you know, actually making sales off of it, it's a great marketing tool and I use it as a portfolio too. I have a portfolio yeah. section in addition to my, what I have available for sale works as a portfolio as well, but it's kind of like a catch-all of, you know, commissions, available work, partnerships, or any representation I might have, um, so I feel like that's a really good, I don't know what the word for it is, um, other than a catch-all of like, yeah, basically anything right. you want to know about me, you can find in one spot. Yeah. And how would people find you? How would people find your website is what I'm asking. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the marketing part. <laughs> um, uh, festivals, I'm learning the value of like in-person events, festivals, and of course, exhibitions, whether it's in a gallery or any type of other show, um, social media, Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I am trying to get better at SEO <laughs> from my website and being found. Other artists, of course, um, I think I've covered everything in terms of ways I try to be discovered. Can I throw one more out there that I know you do that you're not mentioning? Yeah. And it's a really simple one, but it's one that most people leave out. And it's also probably your most effective one and why your sales have increased so much is that when you see people, you tell them what you do and you talk to them about it. This is true. I think that that is one of your strengths. Yeah. And you're really good at that. So don't forget that one. Yeah. So not to say like Saatchi and Artfinder and social media and SEO aren't good things to do. Of course they are, but they're not always the fastest route to where you want to go. Yeah. That's not to say don't have more than one route. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But um, yeah, if you're just thinking about how am I going to make more sales? I'm just thinking about how am I going to get more people to see my website? I think that's your number one. So let's switch gears and talk about the other side of things. What do you feel like might be standing in your way? Um, I have certainly battled with imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would have to say that sometimes myself can get in my own way. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm unique in that aspect. Can you give me an example of, of imposter syndrome? Mm -hmm. How you've gotten in your own way? Um, I, I think I've kind of like, if there's, sometimes I worry that like when I get a win that, I don't know. Like, so for instance, like say I apply to a fair or a festival or an exhibition and I end up getting in or I get a piece in or two pieces in or whatever it is. 
And I, I get like super excited and then I start worrying. Like, I'm like, but what if they just accepted everybody who applied? What if it really was like, they were so desperate for people. They just, anybody who applied got in, you know, like that, that yeah. kind of stuff yeah. starts seeping in and that can be like, so even when I feel like I've won something, it's like, I can't let myself just be, I don't know, <laughs> just enjoy it. Be proud of it. <laughs> Maybe you keep it inside more, but I don't notice that so much from you, just so you know. Um, That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, you're not alone. You're not the only person who does that for sure. <laughs> I would say that a more common way that I hear it described is I think that that's going to be the only time that I ever get yeah. in or sell a piece. Yes. I get it. I get it. Um. I just wanted a quick reframe though. What if they did accept everybody? Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it, you still, still get something. the opportunity. Yeah. You still get to find new opportunities, new leads, new threads to follow. It's a win no matter what. Yes. And that's when those thoughts start coming in, that is pretty much the end logic it takes me a little yeah. bit to get there sometimes yeah. but eventually I'm just like you know what it's it looks good on my CV it's an exhibition it's exposure it's if if I make one connection if I make one cell if I give three business cards or whatever it is then something will have come out of it or something I may not have even imagined will come out of it so that, I mean, and, that, and that's kind of how I've reassured myself in those moments, but yeah, that's just one of the most recent, I guess, examples that I can think of. It, I think that happens the most. <laughs> yes. So as related to what you want, the six figures, the hospitals, the international galleries, and that imposter syndrome, how does that connect? Um, in terms of, let me rephrase it a little bit. Um, how does one keep you from the other? I, I think it kind of comes back to a confidence issue. If I don't, I guess I, I don't want that imposter syndrome or those types of thoughts to hold me back from really like going for, mm -hmm. um, things that, you know, like they forced myself to apply to a couple of shows that I may have a very high likelihood of getting rejected from because I said I could apply and know I got rejected, <laughs> but at least they saw my work right. <laughs> yes. or I cannot apply and never know. Um, so I am trying to keep that stuff at bay and just keep going for things that I know are very highly curated and very, um, what's, I don't know what the word for it is. Um, Exclusive. Yes, perfect. So I have a reminder that pops up on my phone every morning. It's from Alice in Wonderland, of course. And it says, believe in six impossible things before breakfast. It's a good one. This is relevant because when we tell ourselves we can't have something or it's probably not going to happen or it's very unlikely, then we choose, usually, not in your case in this instance, but usually then we choose, well, then I'm not going to do it because it's probably not going to work out. I'm probably going to be disappointed and probably, 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 probably. But if you can believe even there's a 5% chance that I can get accepted, mm -hmm. you're going to take a whole lot different actions than you would if you're telling yourself it's impossible. So that's kind of my little mindset shift every morning and one that I hope to impart on others as well. Yeah, I like it. So I'm just going to see if I can get you to your own answer here. I feel like we can get there. So if you were 95% confident that you could get your work in hospitals, 
let's let's just pick one. You want to go with hospitals or international galleries? Because I'm kind of floating between the two. That's that's tough. Because they're really two different marketing plans. And there's nothing wrong with wanting both. But it's almost like you got to pick one to start with. Yeah. Um, I I, probably hospitals or healthcare. Okay. Just, I I feel like that's within closer reach Mm -hmm. and it just fits so well with my work. Okay. So if you were 95% confident, you could reach out to the three closest hospitals to you, including the one you work at. And you were confident that they would say yes. We would love to hire you to put a huge something in the lobby and maybe in the pediatric wing and in the, I don't know, I don't know all the hospital terms, but in a couple of different wings and in the lobby, what would you do? Um, I would, I would go for it. Is that what you mean? But what would you go, no, like what exactly would you go for? What are the oh, steps like, you would take? Oh, the steps I would take. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, the steps I would take, I, w- I guess I would approach it similar to how I do commissions. I would find out what their vision and mission is for that space, um, mm-hmm. what it's used for, what's currently there, if anything. I feel like art should be enjoyed. So it makes a difference if the art is in an area where there's seating or, you know, or if people are passing by it, like in a corridor. And then, um, of course, like the overall mission of like, like you mentioned, is this a pediatric wing or a pediatric hospital? Um, Because we do have a big children's hospital here in Atlanta. Um, you know, so is this something that's going to be interactive? Is it going to be very colorful and cheerful or like, what's the mood? Um, so I think I would approach it like a commission in that respect in size, um, budget, all of those kind of like finer details, Mm -hmm. probably, you know, again, like commission, we would talk about a deposit and doing like mock-up sketches of, different options, sizes, if they're, if they're undecided on what size, um, or color palette, and then they would approve, um, a mock-up or sketch from that point and, um, then execute the work, uh, get it well, approved. I'm going to stop you for a second. Okay. Let's I was like, I don't know how steps. far I need to go. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay. You're doing great. You're doing great. Let's take a couple steps back though, because you don't currently have someone to have this conversation with. What do you do to find the person or introduce yourself? Like what, what's a couple steps back from that? Um, to find the person that I need to have this conversation with. Um, I would probably try to start with people at my own hospital and people like in my chain of command Mm -hmm. to identify the people who are kind of in charge of these ideas and things. (laughs) Um, And then I don't know the legality of like my own hospital since I'm an employee. I actually had this conversation with someone else. Um, if that was like a conflict of interest, but either way, once I identified the people that I needed to be talking to at my own hospital, I would then try to connect to the other hospitals, especially where I am. I'm around three major Atlanta hospitals. We're all kind of together. And so I have a feeling (laughs) The, the people who I need to talk to at my hospital probably know the people who I would need to talk to at, oh, yeah. at the other hospitals too. So how do you, I'm just, I'm asking a lot of questions because I, I think I can get you to all the answers you need if I just keep saying and, and, <laughs> and. So you are going to talk to the people in your chain of command to figure out who those people are. Yes. And then what? Um, try to, this is the part that most people would stop at, which is why I want you to say it. 
I would try to set up, um, either reach out to them to set up a meeting or a conversation or ask more about their process. Like, do they do this on a once a year basis? Do they only do it when they're looking at building new areas of the hospital or renovation plans? Or do they hire out? Um, maybe they hire out a curator from another company or a gallery um, in the Atlanta area that does all this legwork for them. Can I give you one in-between step that's gonna make it more effective? Yes. I would ask the people in your chain of command to introduce you, write an email saying, this is Daisy, she's blah, 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 blah. This is Sam, he's blah, 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 blah. I'll let okay. you two take it from here. Okay. You can almost even give them a template. Okay. We can yeah. work on that if you want. Okay. So you take that template and say, would you mind introducing me? I'll even give you the language so it's not hard for you at all. Please, 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 please. You're my favorite. Thank <laughs> you. I'll bring you some chocolates, whatever. <laughs> However, whatever your style of that is. Because you randomly reaching out and saying, hey, can I pick your brain? Maybe it'll work. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just yeah. not as effective as yes. someone saying, this is Deja, she works in our hospital, she's amazing, she paints, she is a healer, and blah, 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 and having that, that connection. Yeah. I so like then that. once you get to that next person, then you can do the same. Oh, do you know anybody at the other hospitals you could connect me to? Oh, by the way, I'll, I'll give you some, some stuff you can just copy and paste it and make it your own and send it to them. That would be super, thanks. And just keep doing that yeah. to build that network of people you know in the hospitals. Um, the other step I would add that maybe you did not say is, can I take you out to lunch? Okay. Pick your brain. Wherever you want to go. What's your favorite? What day works for you? We'll make it work. Okay. So... By doing so, then you can ask all these wonderful questions that you wanted to know beforehand. Um, you know, how do you make decisions? What's it based on? How often do you do it? Yada, yada, yada. And if they show interest in what you do as well, you can tell them, well, here's my process. And it can just turn into a conversation instead of a sales pitch. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. So now you're connected to like 50 people in your hospital area. And you just have to follow all the leads. Easy enough. <laughs> I told you at the beginning of this call, my goal was to give you a six month plan. Yes. Yes. That could easily take six months. Yes. And not to say you can't be collecting commissions or deposits yeah. or scheduling out into whatever time frame that you have going. But um, you could even, if the hospitals are not immediate yeses or we do it every five years, you know, that kind of thing. Do you know any pediatricians? Do you know any family practitioners? Do you know any and just keep yes. going until you have a full six months of commissions booked out. Then yes. when you get to your three month mark, go do a little bit more networking, book out some more. Yeah. So that way you are always ahead of the game. You always have that consistent income. You, if you are good at taking notes, you've always got more people to connect to. If you're good at asking, you've always got more people to connect to basically never ending pot because Atlanta leads to the next state, leads to the next state, leads to the next state. That's true. That could keep you busy forever. Yeah. And then when you get tired of that, then you can say, hey, International Galleries, I'm in every hospital in America. You want me? <laughs> I like it. I like this. Yeah. I like it too. I like it for you. I expect you to have five connections in the next month. 
Okay. Five people that have introduced you to someone. Okay. Is that a good goal? In a month? Yeah. Six weeks? Yeah. Can it be, can it be hospitality too? It can be whatever you want it to be. Okay. We're making the rules. It's your business. Okay. And, and I say that because, <laughs> because I have one in the works for hospitality. So I feel like that's. Okay. Well, we'll count that one. Kind of and I would <laughs> say, unless that just starts leading places, choose one to focus on because I think you'll get more momentum that way. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. And it could even be, you try one for three months and you learn the things you like and you learn the things you don't and you want to you want to shift to the other yeah, one that makes sense or I'm so in love with this one and like oh my god I have so much work I'm just going to keep going and that's a good one for five years down the road when I need something else to do yeah okay I like it I love it see look at you you came up with all the answers on your own <laughs> <laughs> love it when that happens <laughs> okay, so Daisy, tell me what your next three action steps are. See, you're even going to give yourself homework. <laughs> I am going to identify people in my chain of commands to identify other people <laughs> to connect with um, in terms of people I need to be having conversations with. So that's steps one, two, and three? Uh, it's okay if it is. Yeah, I guess the maybe the other component of that would be um because we talked about this earlier today is experimenting with um like how my work does rolled up unstretched canvas after drying and everything how it does rolled. I need to experiment with that so I have the confidence of knowing if I'm shipping wherever yeah. that this is doable. And I'd even put that at step four or five, maybe, okay. unless that's just part of your studio practice and it so happens to, you know, that's how you want to do your studio practice in the meantime. But the reason I say that is because if you are working with making connections in your deliverable area, you're not going to really need to roll it up. That's true. Well, that's not true. It might be so big well, that you have yeah. to roll it up. Yes. So I take all that back. Scratch. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Daisy, this was so fun. Thank yes. you for letting me kind of try a new format out on you. I didn't mean to, it just kind of happened, but yeah. it, I enjoyed it. And um, will you tell people where to find you? Where should they go? Uh, yes, you can find me on Instagram at daisyann.art. And my website is www.daisyann.art. That makes it easy. Will mm. you spell Daisy Ann for oh, them? Yes. D-A-I-S-Y-A-N-N-E. I'm glad you asked that because a lot of people spell Ann with no E. Right. Makes sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Uh, Daisy Ann dot art on Instagram. Yes. And tell me the website one more time. www.daisyann, D-A-I-S-Y-A-N-N-E dot art. Perfect. Easy. It's the yeah. same. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daisy. It was wonderful having you. Thank you. It was wonderful being here. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can get new episodes loaded straight onto your phone as soon as they're ready. And if you're one of those people who wants all the things, be sure that I get your email so that I can send you invitations to free classes, send advice your way, and share details about how you can go deeper with me. Just click on the show notes to sign up.